Hello, Anime Nyan here, and today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to create IK rigs uh, for your model. Uh, this is specifically for Dead by Daylight characters, but don't worry if you're not using a Dead by Daylight character and you're not using my previous tutorials, this still works completely fine if you have a character with a skeleton. Yeah, so this is the final product here. And as we can see, uh, basically it's an IK and FK skeleton. So you can move just the child, this is the child bone, and then you'll move the parent bones, which are the uh, shoulder and the elbow. So as you can see here, when I move the hand, uh, the elbow also follows. So normal rigs, how it works is if you move the elbow, the hand will move. So that's forward kinematics, but inverse kinematics is when you move the child bone, the parent will move. So the normal relationship is move the parent, then the child will move. However, this is the inverse of that. So it's just more natural for animating and it makes your life as an animator much, much easier. So just trust me on that. So please uh, use inverse kinematics whenever you're animating or if you want to pose your characters. Yeah, so that's the final product. Uh, but first things first, please check the, dis uh, the Discord link in the description below. So it'll be in the video description and ask any questions that you have there. We are very happy to answer any questions or queries that you have. And I know that sometimes some of my videos aren't the clearest. So please check here and yeah. And if you want to get characters like these, please check uh, the video that I link in the description uh, about um, how to texture and import Dead by Daylight models. Yeah. Okay. So without further ado, what are the soft pre software prerequisites for this method? So sadly, you do need to use some paid plugins here. You have to use AutoRig Pro. Um, and Auto Rig Pro Quick Rig. So you do need to buy both of these. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be suggesting these if they, weren't, they didn't make your life much, much easier. Um, but you can just buy the Auto Rig Pro Lite. Um, but uh, uh, so just for this tutorial here, and you can buy just Auto Rig Pro Quick Rig. Uh, but these are fantastic tools and they make your life much, much easier, especially uh, for this. Okay, so. What we need to do is just in uh, purchase those, um, download and install them. And they'll, they'll have uh, video guides there, but let me just show you what I mean. So I'll just open a new Blender tab and then we'll get started. So yeah, I'm not gonna be showing uh, some of the uh, Dead by Daylight stuff. So I just, uh, let me just activate uh, screencast keys so then we can, uh, you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, okay, cool. So uh, basically, First things first, open a new Blender tab, press A and then X to delete everything there, delete the default cube, goodbye. And then let us begin. So what we need to do first is let's just do um, nurse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, so I'm not gonna explain what I'm doing here. Please look at the pre previous tutorial um, of what, uh, what you should do um, if you're using Dead by Daylight characters. If you're not using Dead by Daylight characters, you can just ignore this. Uh, but I will just import just the body and everything uh, with the PSK add-on. So let me just, uh, that's fine. And let me import the head. Okay, so I've got the nurse and what else do I need to import? So I've exported these with U model and everything, uh, but um, I won't explain the full process. Uh, because this tutorial would just be too long. I can make separate tutorials uh, for this if you want me to do it later. But yeah, so I've got, I've imported the base skeleton and the other skeletons. And now I'm just gonna use my fuse skeletons add-on here. Uh, wait, let me just select both skeletons. Actually, first things first, I will just uh, parent everything to the uh, body. So make sure the body is the last, the body skeleton is the last selected thing. Okay, everything's parented. Okay, let's just fuse these skeletons. So fusing the skeletons, um, um, it's hard to explain, but basically it just joins the skeletons and deletes any ex, uh, extra bones, which are named the same thing. Um, but anyway, you can ignore this if you don't, if you're just using a random model. Okay, and then I'll just texture it really quickly. Um, so I'll actually, no, I'll just select all the meshes here and I'll just right click shade smooth. That's what you wanna do because it makes your meshes look better. 
And then I will just select the game folder here. So I'm just gonna to go to IK Rigs and game. Let's add this and let's press accept. And let's sec select the materials folder. So I'm just going to go to, yeah, nurse um, and materials. That's fine. And let's just add shader maps to selected or selected meshes. And we go to uh, material tab. Uh, we have our fantastic shaded nurse. So now uh, all we need to do is let me just test this really quickly. So PSK and I'll just test it uh, with the import PSA. So I'm just going to go to models and I'm just going to check it with this idle menu animation. Okay. So I'm just going to slide through the animation. Is everything working? Yeah. Okay. Everything looks like it's fine. The skeleton looks like it's done fine. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. So I'll press control Z and I'll just undo all that. Okay, so that's done and we have our skeleton finally. So now how do we use AutoRig Pro? So edit preferences, make sure that AutoRig Pro is installed. So pretty much you have to install these plugins, AutoRig Pro, AutoRig Pro Tools, AutoRig Pro uh, Quick Rig. Actually, sorry, you only need AutoRig Pro um, and AutoRig Pro Quick Rig. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so you will just, you can, when you press N, you'll reveal this menu here. So just make sure all these add-ons are enabled and proxy picker is also enabled. So yeah, so just make sure that th those four plugins are enabled. Okay, so you'll just install those uh, from after downloading them. Okay, so once you have this uh, done, so you should press N to reveal the properties menu. So from here, here's where we start our work with uh, creating an a skeleton for this. So let us go select the skeleton, then go to pose mode. And what you want to do here is you want to start creating uh, this stuff. So it's a little bit annoying because as we can see here, if I start moving these a little bit, if I start moving these bones, you can see that these are for her dress. So we want to ignore these dress bones. And as you can see here, we just want to get this joint hip RT. And as you can see, it's RT. So it's this is the right hand side. So I want to create a leg. So I press the plus icon and I create a leg. This is the left leg though. So I need to change it to right. And that's basically it. So let's just double check. So it just goes down to toe RT. So toe RT is right here. We'll run into one small problem here, uh, but um, we will fix that when we get to it. And as we can see, we have this IK bone here, but we do not have any twist bones. So in this case, we'll have the twist bones as zero. So this is a little bit more simple, um, but Let's create another leg now. So we just press the plus icon. So remember, how do we get to this? We press N to find the properties panel and we click ARP uh, if I didn't explain that properly. Uh, but now you just select the hip LT bone and press the plus icon and press, make sure it's on leg. And then we've added the left leg as well. So that's all good. So we've done both legs now. So now let's move on to the other stuff. So these here are her, still her dress, so we can ignore those bones, but let's have a look at um, the spine now. Let's create the spine, so let's see how far it goes down here. So we have a joint hip master here, but the bone that we want here to select is the joint pelvis 01. So just press the plus icon and spine is fine and okay, and center is fine, but we have to keep going and get uh, manually select some of these bones. So as we can see, this is the first spine, the bone here. So the pelvis, that's fine. And, and then the spine here, spine one is joint torso A01. But we need to keep selecting the bones. So spine two should be joint torso B and uh, spine three should be joint torso C01. Yeah, so as you can see, we just selected all the spine bones. So this right bone right here is starting the neck, so we don't really need it. Okay, let's continue on. So we need to create Another thing, we need to create an arm. So I just press the plus icon and I pressed um, arm and then arm, and this should be a right arm here. Let's just check if we have any twist bones. So I think it said it found one twist bone here. So if I just scroll down here, it said it found a elbow twist bone. Yeah, so it found this elbow twist R. So yeah, that's fine. And I'll just have a look. So one thing to just double check here is for Dead by Daylight models, um, <laughs> the naming convention will be twist or roll. So we have an elbow LT twist. 
So that's the only twist bone. So we don't need to add any other twist bones for the shoulder or anything. It's only for the elbow and they, they already automatically added that. Okay, that's fine. But let's have a look for roll bones. Are there any roll bones? No, there aren't any roll bones. So we won't do anything there. Okay, so, but the only thing we're missing here is the middle, the middle finger, right? So the middle finger here, let's have a look. So the name is on the top left-hand side. It says finger ART. So if I, if I click this bone here and I click uh, the eyedropper, as you can see, it's BRT. So that's not correct because as you can see, all these bones here, they select the ART. So it should be the first bone right here in line with the others. So it should be this uh, middle finger right here. So we've selected that. Um, okay, so now we're gonna create the other side for her left arm. So let's uh, click the uh, plus icon arm again, and L. And yes, yeah, so everything's done correctly, except for that middle bone. So let's, middle finger. So let's select that uh, middle finger bone and click the uh, uh, pick selected bone. Yeah, and then that's basically it. Let's add the neck now. So we select the first bone in the neck and press the plus icon and press head. Yeah, so this is all fine. So neck A01 and joint head O1. So we don't need to select any head end. And if we have a look here, this is joint head O1. So we don't need a second neck bone. So we only have one neck bone and that's pretty much it. So from there, um, just make sure uh, if you run into any issues when you press quick, quick rig, uh, it could be due to the uh, spine. So just switch these bones around and try some different combinations. I found that uh, the pelvis uh, and these spine one, spine two, spine three. So the sp spine three should always be higher in the body than spine two or spine one basically. Okay, yeah, so that's done. So from there, all we need to do is just click quick rig and preserve volume, neck twist. So you can have a look at the settings uh, of what they actually mean here. I've actually forgotten what they mean. What they mean. But if you look at the Audio Rig Pro documentation uh, uh, settings, let's have a quick look. I think there should be, I remember seeing something about it. Um, Audio Rig, if we can, oh, Quick Rig, sorry. So we, we found that thing here, so we can just go to Quick Rig. So this is in the index and we can just scroll down here. So it says Quick Rig and it says neck twist enables the neck twist uh, rotation when rotating the head and uh, match to rig. So, but basically you don't need to worry about it. You can enable all these and it'll be fine. And just press okay. And let's have a look what happens. So yeah, we'll just wait a little bit. And yeah, so we have a perfectly looking rig here. So, but the only problem is um, this leg right here. So as you can see, the toe is not moving with the leg. So the problem is uh, basically uh, we don't need one of these bones. So we can fix this with weight painting, but if we can fix it simpler, um, we will. So let's just click revert. And what we wanna do here, um, actually before I even do this, I forgot one thing to do. I forgot adding the weapons um, because uh, that is something I completely forgot. So I will do that. So I'll switch it to all. And let me just add the weapon really quick because I completely forgot to do that and I need to demonstrate one small thing. So I'll just do that. I'll just, oops, whoops. Let's select the mesh first and add, yep. So that's done. And let me just attach this. So how do you attach weapons normally? Um, well, in the case of Dead by Daylight uh, characters, which might not be the case for yours, but you want to add an object constraint. So copy location and copy rotation. So um, basically, if we just have a quick look at this skeleton right here, there's a bone on each side, which is called a weapon RT and weapon, uh, whoops, or carry, and weapon LT. So these bones here are used to carry items or weapons. So pretty much how behavior um, does their animation is they attach the weapon to this bone, basically. So um, I'm just gonna attach that really quick. So I'm just gonna go back to object mode and I'm just going to select this um, weapon skeleton and I'm just gonna, oh God, I added it, added it to the wrong thing. So this is not what to do. So as you can see, I selected the mesh. You should not do that. So I'm just gonna delete both of those by pressing the delete, uh, the cross um, to delete it. 
but you want to select the weapon skeleton, not the mesh, okay? So select the weapon skeleton, um, copy location, and what you wanna do is, let's target that base skeleton right here. So the TN body um, 006 ref. Yeah, that's fine. And let's target the weapon. So we typed in weapon to filter and weapon RT. So yes, you can see it's, it's uh, floating towards that side. And let's add a copy rotation constraint. So a TN uh, body 006 ref, apologies <laughs> if this is not exactly, um, this is more, this is a little bit dead by daylight related and uh, specifically for that. But yeah, so the, the weapons rotated fine, but in order to check it properly, we need to select the skeleton and let's import a PSA first. So this will ensure that uh, we know that the weapon uh, location is correct. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, sometimes though the weapon can be slightly rotated. So if we select the weapon mesh itself, it can, it can look something like this. And you'll be like, wow, what do I do in this case? Okay, so sometimes the weapon can be like that. So what you do is basically you will rotate it and you'll move it until it looks like it's in the correct location. So you select the mesh. I've selected the mesh here and I can move it. Okay, so you can't move the skeleton itself because it has the copy location and copy rotation constraints. So it always follows the rotation and location of the bone but you can move the child and that's the key thing. So we can move these things until they match. Okay, so you can move the rotation and that. But I will, I will just uh, reset all these uh, because I do not need to do that for mine. Okay, so I just press Alt G and Alt R to, to uh, reset those transformations. Okay, so now let's press Control G Z until I clear that rotation. So I'm just pressing Control Z a couple of times until I have it, oops, I, I have it like this. Okay, so now let's continue on with that Auto Rig Pro stuff. Okay, so as we were doing beforehand, the problem was the toe, the toe uh, had, had a problem, right? So the, the toe had a problem because when I move the leg, the toe still is stuck there. But uh, the way to solve this is pretty simple. Let's just press Control Z and let's just revert the skeleton and basically what we need to do is from the left leg let's delete this toes here and from the right leg let's also delete the toe there and it's that simple like if you have this problem that's all you need to do just delete the toes and then it will distribute the weight to the foot so now when we move this leg here as we can see everything is working just fine okay so as we can see this is this is working fine Okay, so um, someone asked me um, basically, what are these bones over here? So they don't do anything when I move them, right? So what are they for? So these bones here are for like the toes, as you can imagine, because they're next to the feet. But since we didn't specify any toe bones here, these are just remnants. So we don't actually need these. Um, uh, so, so, but um, they're just there because um, they're leftovers that are not used. So don't worry about these bones, you can just leave them where they are, but um, they don't really affect the skeleton or anything. So now we can just move the leg like it's IK, but you can notice that sometimes it will stretch much longer than it is, right? That makes no sense. Why is it stretching so long, right? Um, so you can just go to the, the tools panel here and you can turn off auto stretch. So that will mean that it will not stretch anymore. However, um, it's not really a big deal. You can just leave it there. Basically, just <laughs> if you animate carefully, you will never need a stretch, right? And sometimes you need a little bit of a stretch. So it's not actually a bad thing. It's only when it becomes extreme that it becomes really noticeable. So really you can just leave it on as one. So just select the bone and just leave it as one. If you want to, you can turn it to zero and that will disable stretching. But I just leave it as one. Okay. so. The next thing that you can do, um, uh, what we can do here is, so this one here is on FK right now. So the hand but is on FK, but we want it to be on IK for easier, uh, an easier time because let's have a look. When I move the hand, I, it's really hard to move it in position. Say I want uh, the nurse to be shaking your hand right now. I, ha I have to first, so this is in forward kinematics. 
I have to first move her hand forwards, her, her shoulder, then I need to move her elbow in place, and then move her hand. Can you see how this is really awkward? So that's the reason why we need inverse kinematics. So um, in order to switch this, all we need to do is just click on this bone right here, the um, square bone, and then we just switch it. So we just go to the, item, the, to the tool tab here. So in order to reveal this menu again, press N. And so to reveal it and just make it to zero. So as we can see, zero is IK and one is FK, right? So when you're at zero, this bone right here, the, the middle bone here, uh, which is the uh, shoulder bone, oh, sorry, the elbow bone will disappear. And you'll be like, but why? Because right now, instead of the shoulder, the shoulder, the shoulder, the elbow bone controlling the hand bone, it's the hand bone controlling the sho shoulder bone. <laughs> yeah, sorry, the shoulder bone and the elbow bone. So can you see now, this is a lot less awkward. So if I want her to um, shake your hand, all I need to do is just move her hand right here and it will move, um, it will move, uh, sorry, it will, it will move the parent bones accordingly. Yeah, so as we can see, we still have that stretching issue. If you want, if you want, you can turn down the auto stretch um, if you want, uh, but it's not a big deal. So <laughs> yeah, and, and we can just do the same thing with the right hand. So just turn on, uh, turn it from FK to IK. So it's easier animating. Okay, yeah, so as we can see, everything's fine. Okay, but the only thing that's the problem is why is this weapon just staying in place? That makes no sense. Actually, it does. <laughs> but let's go to object mode and let's have a quick look. So let's just select this weapon skeleton right here. And if we see, it's, co it's connected to this TN body 006 ref skeleton. So this is our base skeleton, our base skeleton, which is, which stays in place and is right over here, right? It's right here. If we just, it's actually, so Auto Rig Pro creates another skeleton. That's the idea behind it. So it creates another skeleton um, over here. Uh, like it creates this other skeleton, which looks better. And basically it copies all the bones from this skeleton here, from your old skeleton. And it remakes a new skeleton for you. So basically the way to fix this armature problem, this copy location problem is to attach it to the new uh, the new uh, skeleton, which is called rig. So let's just target this to rig and we'll just, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. We just change it both to rig. This target right here, let me just check I'm still recording. Yes, all good. Okay, so basically that solves your weapon problem. And from now on, when we go to pose mode, a good idea to uh, find some of the bones that you know uh, will be here is just search here, go to pose mode and just search weapon. So we want the weapon RT, so let's right click and select. So we've selected the weapon bone and it's right here. So where is it actually? Why, why have we not selected it? Joint weapon RT, right click, select. Uh, oh yes, yeah, sorry. We have selected the wrong skeleton. So you have to make sure you've selected the rig skeleton. Can you see how this is the TN body uh, 006 ref.ao? So this was the original skeleton um, that that the, the, that the Auto Rig Pro skeleton is based off of, right? So uh, we have to choose this skeleton instead. So we searched weapon and let's uh, left click on this joint weapon RT and it selects the right uh, bone right here. In fact, we can just make it a little bit larger. So let's go to the bone tab here. Let's go viewport display and let's scale it up a little bit. Maybe give it a different thing. So we'll give it a CS arrow so we know that we can see it. So yes, so this bone right here now is the weapon. So we can control the weapon rotation like this. We can control its position just with this bone. And the, the smart bit about this is moving the hand moves the bone as well. So <laughs> you can kind of just make the fingers grasp the, um, hand, the handle and uh, that's basically it. So we can just click R to rotate this. If I can rotate this properly, maybe I should rotate the base of the fingers. So I'll just select all these bones right here. So I'll hold the shift key to select multiple bones. I'll click R to rotate it. 
I press R and X maybe in the X axis. Oh, probably not the X axis. Uh, R, Z. Yeah, this is a little bit better. Um, but maybe not. Let's try R, Y. Okay, maybe not. R, Z looks like it's the best option here. And maybe R, X a little bit as well. So we rotate it in both axes. So R, X and R, Y. Yep, so we're just uh, grasping our fingers around the bone, around the weapon. Uh, let's go R, X. Yep. Um, but basically you have to fine tune it. <laughs> so we can just uh, rotate this weapon around or something. It really, it really depends like how you do it. <laughs> Right now, it's just like fine tuning, and uh, but yeah, this is the general idea. So, from this, you can create amazing animations because it's really a lot easier to animate your character. If you want to move your whole character, you want to select this bone right here, and you will move it. Actually, sorry, you can select this bone right here, this circle bone, and this will move all the skeleton bones really easily. Yep, so that's really easy to move the skeleton to animate movement or anything like that. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it for this IK rig. We're gonna do one more IK rig. Um, if you if you don't wanna watch it, that's okay. Because <laughs> um, that's it's the same thing, but we're just doing it uh, for another skeleton. Actually, one more thing. Let me just go to skeleton and I'll go viewport display and I'll make it in front so you can see all the bones here. So from here, you can also use like either cloth simulation or some wiggle bones add-ons to simulate this cloth if you wanted, but we're not gonna get into that today. Um, and I might just use in front, uh, turn off in front because it's less messy for this skeleton here. Okay, so yeah, so this one's done. Let us uh, go to another skeleton. Let's create a Jill really quickly. So I'll just create another, bl another blender tab. So let me just close this one here. And we're just going to do the same thing for another skeleton, just for some extra practice uh, if you were feeling up to it. So let me just uh, turn on screencast keys here. So I pressed N to open this menu, but don't worry about this. This is just for your benefit so you can see which keys I am pressing. So I press N to open this uh, panel here. I press A to select all the objects and I press X to delete. Okay, I press OK, enter, okay. Now let's just import all the Jill stuff. So let's reorient bones. Let's get skeleton and let us um, find all that stuff. So characters, campers, S26 uh, models. Okay, so let's just, whoops, actually I had this on scale. So right now I need to import just the base skeleton on the uh, setting of scale. And let's just quickly import the rest of the stuff. Um, Okay, so I'll just import the torso, the legs, and I'll import the head. I hope this also makes sense, uh, even if you're not using Dead by Daylight characters. Uh, just go through the same method of, yeah, of just using Auto, Pre Auto Rig Pro Quick Rig. Okay, so now we're going to import just any accessories or hair as on the setting of all. Okay, yep. Now, let's just select uh, all these uh, meshes without a uh, an, a armature. Let's control click the armature. So make sure the armature is the last thing selected. The base skeleton is the last thing selected. Press control P while your mouse is in uh, the 3D view. Armature deform. So this makes basically makes uh, the mesh, the, uh, the armature, the, uh, the parent of the meshes. Okay, yeah, so that's basically all done. Let's just select all the meshes here. So I'm just using the shift key to select all those and I press the, hold the control key to select this one as well. Right click, shade smooth. Great. Okay, now let's just fuse both of these skeletons together. So I will just select both the skeletons and I'll go to the fuse scale panel, uh, select S26 as the base skeleton to fuse to, press fuse skeletons and it's done. So let's just check that this, uh, this uh, skeleton is working fine. So I'll just go to game characters, campers, S26 uh, animation menu. And I find that the best, the best uh, animations for Dead by Daylight models is the sit on log animation. Okay, yeah, so I'll just, yeah, I'll use this sit on log animation. And basically, as we can see, everything seems to be working fine. 
yeah, so nothing's like breaking uh, really badly. And the sit on log animation moves the armature the most. Okay, so I'll press Control Z and I'll just texture it really quickly. So I'll just select everything with the A key. I'll go to load UE shaders. Um, remember, how do I reveal this panel again? Press the N key to reveal this panel. I'm just gonna widen it a little bit so then I can see stuff. I'm gonna press A to select all the meshes. I can select uh, armatures as well, it doesn't matter. Uh, let me just go to the game folder. Yep, and I'll just get the materials folder for, for uh, Jill. Just a quick point, uh, you can't make two, uh, two, skeleton, uh, two auto rig pro skeletons in the same file. You will see this error. So if I try to make another skeleton, uh, let me just show you real quick what happens if you make another skeleton another auto rig pro skeleton in the same file. So if you copy this and I paste it, um, and then I try to make another auto rig pro skeleton with these settings, and I press quick rig, it says found an existing auto rig pro armature rig, cannot make rig. So you can see that you have to make a new blender file for another um, auto rig pro rig. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. If you want to have two auto rig pro rigs, in the same file, just make it as a separate file and then just file, append, append, and then append a collection. So append this collection right here, which is called collection, and that will import everything in that file, uh, including the auto rig pro rigs into it. So yeah, but anyway, uh, let's continue on. Let me just go to the material preview mode. Uh, yep, so as we can see, it's empty. So we're just going to quickly, um, make this materials folder, game characters. So this is optional because you can see there's not a exclamation mark behind it. Um, materials, I'll explain what I mean by that. Except, so as you can see, this select materials folder is not uh, required. The only required field here is the exclamation mark to so the select exported game folder. The materials folder does make it a little bit faster for the plugin to search. Okay, so I pressed add shader map to all selected meshes. And as we can see, it read the props.txt files perfectly. Jill is textured. Okay, so let's make a auto rig pro armature from this. So let's just, and by the way, I've just been using DVD Pit Princess generic, this uh, preset right here, <laughs> which is fine. Like if you want to, if you don't really care too much about quality, if you're looking at close-ups, you want to divide it into clothing, skin, and hair. But uh, for, this pub, for this tutorial, I am just focusing on speed. So um, I also need to import the torch. So let's import the torch as well. So the torch is, or the flashlight is right here. Game, um, meshes, interactable objects, flashlight. I'll get the, so I'll put it on all because this is an accessory and I'll get the fourth, the fourth anniversary uh, torch. Why not? Uh, let's just, Go here and we'll just add shader map to all selected meshes and hopefully it'll compile we'll just wait a little bit oh that's lagging out okay yeah okay that lagged out for a second but that's completely fine so that's tor that's the torch right there let's do the same process so select the armature right here and what we want to do here is just select it and add object constraints to um to attach the weapon attach it to the weapon uh, slot or bone. So let's just uh, type in S26, the skeleton ref. So that's the base skeleton. And let's look for weapon RT because uh, survivors hold their torches in their right hands. So S26, the skeleton ref, and let's just use weapon RT. Okay, so as we can see here, the, the rotation of this torch is off, I think, but let's just have a look here. Let's just make sure that it, it might not actually be off because let's just test it with an animation that can tell you if the rotation of the torch is actually off. So let's have a look. Let's uh, import the sit on log animation again. Yeah, so it seems to be fine here, but let's import another animation because this isn't a very appropriate for a torch. So let's have a look at maybe one of the idle menu animations. Okay. Yeah, that's decent, I think. Actually, so I think that actually rotation might be right. But again, if the rotation is not right and you think it should be adjusted, just adjust it by eye. So 
Maybe I want it to face this way, okay? And maybe I want it to be a little bit backwards. Whoops. I want it to be a little bit backwards. So I'll just, maybe I'll move the location backwards a little bit, right? So it fits in her hand a little bit more. Yeah, so, and maybe I'll move it to the left or right a little bit with the location and rotation, okay? So maybe move it uh, back here and the Z, let's move it there. So maybe I want it to look like this, okay? So maybe I can just adjust the rotation by just selecting the mesh itself, not the skeleton. As you can see, I selected the mesh and I moved it and yeah, so that's how you can do it. But um, I'm not gonna do that uh, because <laughs> it was already in the correct position. Okay, let's just uh, undo that animation. So let's just select that uh, base skeleton, right click on the animation, clear animation data, uh, select the uh, base skeleton and go to pose mode and press Alt G, Alt R, Alt S. Okay, that will clear all transforms. So the animation will not be imported. Okay, so it's like the animation has not been imported. Okay, so let's add the auto rig pro skeleton to this. So we just uh, open up ARP, so press N to reveal the properties menu, menu, uh, uh, menu yeah, so then uh, just go to Auto Rig Pro ARP and open up the Auto Rig Pro Quick Rig. So let's go to pose mode, let's put this skeleton in pose mode, and now let's select a bone. So this one's a little bit more complicated. As we can see, it has a joint hip roll RT01, but we want to select the joint hip RT. So now we want to press the plus icon and press leg and we wanna change this to a right leg. Now we start we start to have some of these twist bones right here. So these twist bones look like this. You can also search them up here. So roll, as we can see, we have these twist bones. They're in charge of, I guess, twisting the leg. So the leg can move and rotate in the X and Y or whatever. So it can just rotate along these bones. So we just, we can actually just try. Well, right now they don't have any effect, um, but I think they do have an effect. <laughs> If you add them, I think, <laughs> not exactly sure. Um, but as we can see, we have these hip, we have these hand roll, roll bones. Do we have any twist bones in this one? Not really. So we just have uh, roll bones to worry about. But let's add uh, one bone to each. So now we have to manually add these. So hip roll, let's add that one as the one under hip. Let's scroll down and let's just add this one here as the knee roll. And I don't think we need any more. As we can see, we're gonna still have that toes issue here, but I'm just gonna leave this here. We can edit it anytime. Let's add the second leg. Let's select the joint hip LT and press the plus icon and press leg. Okay, so this is the left leg, that's all right, but we want to add the twist bones now. So I just added one twist bone by clicking on the right arrow and let's add that twist bone here, the hip roll under the hip and the the knee roll under the knee. Okay, same problem with the toes, but we're just gonna go back and fix that. Okay, so now we just want to add the clavicle. So we wanna add an arm. So this one is a right arm. So let's change it to a right arm. And because of Dead by Daylight's naming convention, uh, we have to do the same thing. We have to add the middle finger as this one here. So middle ART, 01, that's fine. And make sure that we have three bones because as you can see in this hand, one, two, three. Every finger has three bones. That's why the fingers is on three. That's fine. Okay, so let's add the, uh, uh, sorry, we have to add some twist bones here. So let's add uh, one twist bone. So this one here, let's look at the name on the top left. It says joint shoulder roll RT01. So we added a joint shoulder roll RT01 to this one right here under joint shoulder, right? Okay, so this twist bone here, let's select the elbow uh, and then we'll just add it right here. So we'll add, click on the eyedropper to add it. And yeah, so that's this arm done. Let's finish the left arm in the same manner. So just add an arm, make sure it's left. Okay, that's good. Let's add the twist bones. So let's add the shoulder roll and let's click on the elbow roll and then uh, add it right there. Okay, so now we just need to add the middle finger. So the middle finger is this one right here. So we click on the ART again, make sure that it's the right bone because uh, Dead by Daylight goes A, A R A L T B L T and C L T for the three bones in the fingers. Um, but it doesn't really match Auto Rig Pro's uh, 
naming convention, that's why it can't sense it automatically. Let's do the spine now. So let's select not the joint hip master, but the pelvis. So the pelvis is this bone here. So if you ever run into issues, uh, try to make sure that the uh, pelvis is the bone selected in the pelvis, right? So it, it should be joint pelvis in pelvis, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> now select the first uh, spine bone as torso A. Let's go upwards, uh, spine two, torso B, and spine three as torso C. So that's all of our spine bones and it's in the center, which is good. Okay, so now we just need to do the head. So let's add the plus icon, do the head as well. Okay, so joint neck A01, that's fine. And joint head O1, that's all good. So as you can see here, we do not need a head end or a head or a neck. Now let's do the quick rig. Let's press quick rig, neck twist and preserve volume is completely fine. Press okay and let's let it run. And we're gonna have the same problems as last time. Okay, yep, so that's good. Okay, as we can see, <laughs> the toes are still sticking in the same position and so is the torch. So let's just fix those things as we did last time. So just press revert and uh, for these legs here, just delete this toes bone. Delete this toes bone and delete this uh, other toes bone right here. That's all good. And now what we want to do is, what do we need to do? Uh, Yes, that, that will fix this one. Okay, so I'll just press quick rig again, and then we just need to fix the torch that was attached to the weapon bone. So as we can see here, if we move the character around with this uh, bone right here, yeah, so everything's fine, except the torch still isn't attached. Okay, I'll explain it again. So why is the torch not attached? So the reason why is because it's attached to the old skeleton. Auto Rig Pro makes a copy of the skeleton, and then this skeleton here is useless, right? It's not use useful for us. We need the copy of the skeleton, which is the rig right here. Okay, yeah, that's good. So what we'll do is we will just attach this uh, skeleton, attach this bone, this, um, um, or attach this uh, flashlight skeleton. So select the fl flashlight skeleton and edit this copy location road is constraint to be on rig. So rig is the new rig, uh, auto rig pro rig, and change this one, the copy rotation to rig here. Yeah, okay, that's all fine. Let's click on the skeleton again. Let's go to pose mode. And if we just move this hand right here, as we can see, the, the um, torch follows. Yeah, so now it's on FK again. So let's go press N to reveal the tools menu and then go to the tools and then go to uh, IK. So we're gonna switch it to IK because IK is pretty much usually better for animation, right? So now we can just press G to move this. And as we can see, we've got the stretch going on again, but that's okay. If you want to disable the stretch, go to N, disable auto stretch, and this will no longer stretch. Or oh, I pressed H accidentally, so press Control Z, uh, but this will no longer stretch anymore it'll just reach the match, max distance. But as I said before, auto stretch is useful, right? So like sometimes you do need to stretch a little bit and it won't distort the mesh too much, but if you don't want any distortion happening, that's fine too. So now, uh, yeah, so we can just get this and we can just exaggerate some certain bones. So let's search up, uh, what is it, uh, jaw. So this is a bone I want to remember do not select this bone right here. So this, this bone right here because it's under the S26 skeleton ref. So this is our original skeleton. We want the Auto Rig Pro skeleton. So Auto Rig Pro makes a copy again. So we want this one. So right click, select. And what we want to do is go to the bone tab, go to viewport display, and we're just going to make it much, much larger. So this is the, 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 the jaw bone because we want to make sure that we can actually see it and edit it. Yeah, so I just changed it to CS arrow as well, just uh, for viewing purposes. And now, as you can see, we can move the jaw really easily. Uh, we can move it downwards. We can RX to open it, open the jaw like that. And that's generally how you want to do it. So RX means ro rotate along the X axis. It's restricting it just to the X axis. If I, want, if I want to rotate it along the Z axis, RZ. It's the same thing with any of the other ones. Okay, yeah. So that's one bone that we want. And perhaps we also want the joint weapon. 
So let's look for the weapon RT bone. So weapon RT bone. Okay, so now, yeah, so the joint weapon RT bone and we'll just go to viewport display. Oh, where is it? Joint weapon. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. We have to be on, again, I got it wrong. So we have to go on the rig skeleton, right? This is the auto rig pro skeleton. And let's just scale it up here. Let's scale it up again. And I want to make it a CS arrow because it's a lot more noticeable like that. Okay, so we have these two bones here. And now we can kind of play with the character and pretty much create any pose that we want. So now we can just rotate. If we want to rotate it, we can RX, maybe 180. So we can do a total flip. And then we can do RZ. We can have it in our hand like this and maybe even move it just into her hand a little bit more nicely and then maybe put her hand around it, put her fingers. So select the finger, the these finger joints, RX, uh, whoops. Uh, let's try another one, RZ, uh, no, <laughs> RY. Yeah, RY is what we're looking for. So maybe like that and let's just select the, uh, the joint weapon and we'll just move it into place until it looks fairly right. We can also move some of these fingers a little bit more like if you really want to adjust it. I'm not going to do too much here because this is a tutorial, but R, R, <laughs> R, Y. Yep. So we can just, oh, ah, whoops. <laughs> Our fingers are kind of bending into nothingness. But yeah, so we can just uh, bend her fingers around a little bit more like that. So they fit the torch more, but obviously they're kind of, kind of, messed up but who cares we can just forget about that for now but yeah so we can just have her pointing her torch into the sunlight you can disable auto stretch and let's have it like this rotate the hand a little bit the hand bone so r maybe rz let's try ry maybe to rotate it upwards a little bit so it looks a little bit awkward, less awkward and we'll just move it like this right and then we can pose the character really easily so we can just move her backwards in fact, let's disable auto stretch because it's kind of annoying me, but uh, normally it doesn't matter too much. Like, um, and we can just rotate it uh, along RX so we can have her pointing it a little bit more nicely. And yeah, so we can move her center, the torso, like her torso a little bit so we can rotate it backwards or something. Um, I think that should be good. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So you can pretty much pose your character any way you want. You might want to look for like the hip master bones and also change those if you want. Uh, I might do that really quickly just because I know I think it's fine actually. Hip master, is this hip master? Sorry, it's fine. Okay, you might want to make this a little bit larger. So just go bone and scale it up a little bit more. Maybe if you want like this hip master bone right here. Um, oh wait, sorry, I'm on the wrong hip master again. Every time. <laughs> So select and maybe you want to make this hip master a little bit bigger yeah because it's a little bit too small and yeah so this is this controls the hip here so maybe you want to make it a little bit bigger and change the shape yeah but basically yeah that's basically it so now we can move her hips really easily move her legs really easily move her entire body really easily move the weapon really easily this is the ik rigs um which is really really nice okay so this is how you can animate stuff really nicely let me just turn down the scale again uh, i because i messed that up yeah okay so that's basically it so thank you so much for being here um for this weird tutorial uh but this ik rigs these ik rigs will really help you out when animating it makes it a lot more natural and a lot faster to animate and a good skeleton will make your life so much easier when animating posing whatever Okay, so yeah, so thank you so much for being here and you are my lifeblood, Anime Nyan, out.